I think we're ready for page 52 today. Um, but before we start, now we, we should know all of the books of the Old Testament by now. I mean, I've still got extra sheets. If you want practice sheets to take with you, so you can fold it up in your pocket or your purse or something and, and don't have to take your whole book with you whenever you're going somewhere. Uh, pardon me? Did I hear something? Oh, excuse me. Um, I'll be happy to, to give you one of those sheets afterward, if you'd like. Uh, let's try the books of the Old Testament. And if, Did we start on the New Testament? No. Okay, we need to do that today. We're going we're gonna to do two sections today of the New Testament. Now, that sounds like a lot. Actually, if you look at your list, that's only five books. So I think we can handle it. You could probably do those right now. They're, they're well known. Let's, let's try the Old Testament first. And, and, and please, even if you know them, say them out loud so that the person next to you will hear them and, and we'll get these things in our heads where we hear it even when it's not being spoken. Let's try it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I like to play with Malachi and call it Malachi just for fun, but that messes up the rhyme and the rhythm, so I don't. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm not sick. I, I'm really not. I sound like I'm dying, but I, I, I don't have a temperature. I, my energy level is is up that well I'm 66 how much energy do you have at 66 but I, I've got what what's typical and uh, um, I think I'm ready to go at it again uh, the first five books of the New Testament the Gospels uh, which are somewhat called uh, biography because they recount the highlights of of the earthly ministry of the uh, well the, of his life actually there is a uh, lengthy silent period in there, but of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the whole history section, which is one book. Um, you could probably name the Gospels right now. Who, who in here could... No, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's counterproductive. Let's do the first five books. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. We're done. We're done. See, that's two sections. And I, got, I heard good participation there. A lot of you know those. Um, perhaps even most of you, but let's do it one more time before we get started on today's material. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. There we are. There we are. And I heard some people actually, uh, once they had their momentum up, actually start into the next ones after that. And that's good. We're going to be doing that as time goes by. All right. Back to... Um, our material. Uh, according to the NKJV, so-called New King James Version, which really isn't new and it's certainly not a KJV, no one would stoop so low as to corrupt God's work. No, they just peddle it. And uh, the reading matches the Alexandrian versions. Alexandrian that's the source of the, if, by way of review, of the uh, corrupt uh, manuscripts. Um, number 10, since the KJV has changed the truth of God into a lie, it has also changed Romans, or since the NKJV, excuse me, has changed the truth of God into a lie, it has also changed Romans 125 to read exchanged the truth of God for the lie, this reading matches the readings of the new perversions. The NKJV gives us no command to study God's word in 2 Timothy 2.15. 
And uh, it, we really, um, what's, the, what's the benefit of studying? Other than the fact you're obe obeying the word of God. What, what's the advantage of that? Okay, all right. And without studying, without comparing scripture with scripture and so forth, what do you come up with? You come up with, with verses that people pull out of context and start whole religious uh, sects. Um, and, and they've got a verse to stand on, but it's out of context and they're in error. The word science is replaced with knowledge in 1 Timothy 6.20, although science has occurred in every edition of the KJV since 16.11. <coughs> Um, is the word of God against um, no. science? No. Um, but uh, honest science. Honest science. Number 13. The Jews require a sign, according to 1 Corinthians 1.22, and according to Jesus Christ in John 4.48, but the NKJV says they only request a sign. They didn't request one when signs first appeared in Exodus 4, and there are numerous places throughout the Bible where God gives Israel signs when they haven't requested anything. They require a sign because signs are a part of their heritage. It, um, it confirmed God's word. And by the way, in the in the early New Testament, that was still going on. The King James reading in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature, which matches the words of Christ in Mark 16.15. The cross-reverence is destroyed in the NKJV, which uses the word creation. Rocks are creations. You ever met somebody who you equated with a rock? I have, so. <laughs> As a final note, we'd like to point out how the NKJV is very inconsistent in its attempt to update. That's, that's what they uh, insist that they're doing, is updating the language. To update the language of the KJV, the preface to the NKJV states that previous revisions of the KJV have sought to keep abreast of changes in English speech, and also that they too are taking a further step toward this objective. However, when taking a closer look at the language of the NKJV, we find that oftentimes they are stepping backwards. <coughs> Please note a few examples of how well the NKJV has kept abreast of the changes in the English language. By the way, there have been um, adjustments in the KJV since it was first printed in 1611. Um, the English language had not completely stable. Well, is it, has it stabilized today? I mean... Um, we could think of some words today that mean exactly the opposite of what they did, even in my lifetime. Um, uh, but uh, we're going to see before we're through that um, some of the uh, original King James translators were part of those um, updatings, we could call them. Um, they didn't change the text, though. Everybody have these? There weren't very many blanks on that page. <coughs> very good example of one word in the King James Bible can never be estimated the word thou. We have no modern word for the word thou. Singular plural pronoun. Like uh, in Isaiah 63, thou shall make it. 
Okay, let's look at um, let's look at some of these updating so-called. The a few examples um, in the KJV in Exodus or excuse me Ezekiel thirty-one four little rivers. Anybody have a hard time understanding what we mean by little rivers? Uh, the NKJV had to use a different word in order to get a copyright. I've never seen this word before. R rivulets. Well, perhaps if you, if you read the context, you could sort of guess what it meant. But is that really updating? Psalm 43.1, judge, NKJV, vindicate. Psalm 139.43, thoughts, NKJV, anxieties. Is it possible <coughs> to have a thought that doesn't reflect anxiety? I would, I would think so. Isaiah 28.1, fat. NKJV, verdant. And I, I didn't know what that word meant. So I looked up a definition and inserted it, inserted it here. It means green or inexperienced. Um, Amos 5.21, smell. NKJV, savor. Matthew 26, 7, box, <coughs> NKJV, flask. How many of you took high school chemistry? Yes, ma'am. Remember what a flask was? You could hold things in a flask that you couldn't hold in a box. Is it a big deal? Maybe not. That's kind of the point. But, but if, if the word is not right here, where is it right? And, and, and so it just throws doubt on the whole uh, text. Luke 8.31, the deep. NKJV, the abyss. Um, John 10.41, did. NKJV performed. Now those could mean the same thing, but we're, <coughs> excuse me, we're told that the NKJV has long, complicated words and, and it's hard to understand. How much, how, how much simpler can you get than did? Luke 19, 11 to 27, pounds. Uh, NKJV minus. I didn't know what that was either. It's an ancient unit of weight, which is archaic. So they're inserting an archaic word, um, and, 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 and the, the charge against the NKJV is archaic language. Uh, John 19, 9, Judgment Hall, NKJV, Praetorium, Acts 1, 18, Bowels, uh, NKJV entrails, Acts 18.12, deputy, NKJV proconsul, uh, Acts 21.38, uproar, NKJV insurrection, Acts 27.30, boat, NKJV skiff, Hebrews 12.8, bastard, NKJV illegitimate. Um, A different word for the sake of a different word. Our author of the original material here says, oh yes, that's so much clearer, isn't it? Being, being facetious, of course. The New Schofield Reference Bible. Um, now this isn't 
I don't believe, Brother William, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking this is the same one you've been pointing to, but I could be mistaken there. Okay, well, at that late date, it could be. An another counterfeit KJV is the New Schofield Reference Bible. King James Version is clearly printed on the cover, but since when has it been safe to judge a book by its cover? Uh, please note the following. Dr. C.I. Schofield had been dead many years when the NSRB was published, there you go, Brother Williams, so you're right, in 1967, he would have never approved of having his name on a little b Bible that alters the text of the KJV. The 1909 and 1917 editions of the Schofield Reference Bible do not change the text. Therefore, the NSRB of 1967 is not a Schofield Bible and it is not a KJV. Don't get sucked into that. Dr. Schofield would have never referred to baptism as a sacrament, but the NSRB takes the liberty to do so in an Acts 8 footnote. Um, Acts 8 would be uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, and uh, you see here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? That would be the context. And uh, let's talk just for a minute about uh, what we're saying when we, when we say sacrament. Uh, there are certain religious sects who name the name of Christ, who consider baptism and certain other things to... Um, the, the, the performance of that or the submission to that to give them um, some kind of credential or merit before God and, and thus is part of a works salvation. Uh, baptism isn't a sacrament, it's an ordinance. We do it out of obedience once we're already saved. It's a big difference. Everybody have these? I keep forgetting. I, I already have them filled in. The NSRB changes the KJV with, quote, better readings in over 6,500 places. In the introduction to the NSRB 1967 edition, does anybody know how to pronounce his name? It looks like Schuyler. Is it Schuyler? I don't know. That Y in there kind of throws me off. Anyway, you can see his name. English tries to justify changing the KJV text on the basis that Schofield saw the need to update his reference Bible after only eight years. Yes, Schofield did update his Bible, but, and this is critical, he never changed the text, the text, and he never granted anyone else permission to do so. He changed some of his notes or allowed some of his notes to be changed. In many places, the NSRB agrees with the readings of the new translations rather than the KJV, so it cannot possibly be a KJV. For example, a son of the gods appears in Daniel 3.25 rather than the son of God, KJV. A, a comment? Thought? Did I hear something? Um... A great application to television and magazines is destroyed when the NSRB replaces pictures with stone idols in Numbers 33:52. Then, of course, NSRB lines up right behind the ASV in places like 1 Timothy 6:20, Acts 4:27, and Romans 1:25. 
I think the point there about pictures is, is, is good to reflect on. Now, I'm not Lester Roloff. Bro, uh, Pastor likes to comment on how Lester Roloff would, back in the 60s, would come to Tennessee Temple and other places and, and preach against television and, and everybody would go out and throw out their TVs and then a f few weeks later they'd miss them and go buy a new one and, and uh, that sort of thing. And in those days, um, there were some programs on that you could enjoy. And if you had the self-discipline to avoid the ones that um, you shouldn't watch. I was walking through Walmart the other day, and uh, there was a fella, a couple of fellas, uh, toward the back near the electronics section who were promoting a certain good deal on some kind of uh, television access, I don't know if it was cable or satellite or what it was, internet maybe, and uh, uh, he asked me, uh, who's, who's your current uh, uh, TV supplier? And I said, I don't have any. Well, who do you, what, what do you watch at home? I said, nothing. And he, that did not compute for him. <laughs> there is so little, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost sanctified back in the 60s compared to what it is now. There is so little worth watching on television, I can't see paying for it. I just, it, I think it's bad stewardship. Now, I'm not saying go throw out your TV. I have a TV in my house, but it's hooked up to a video machine. And if we want to watch a video that we select, we can do it. And I guess there's some internet ways you can do a similar thing. I'm not that tech savvy, so, and we don't even have internet at home, so um, I'm not, I'm not, preaching against the internet. I just reflect on, on TV though. How much is out there that um, at least a few years ago wouldn't cause us embarrassment if, uh, if, if a Christian leader walked into our homes? Dr. William Grady addresses the NSRB in his book Final Authority his research includes the following on page 316. A random survey of the NSRB of margins in Philippians alone reveals a total of 29 changes from the King James Bible. Of these, 21 or 72 percent were traced to either the RSV or the NASV. The skeptic can check it out for himself and there are the references. I won't bother to read those, you have them in front of you. The new Schofield Reference Bible in the King James Version is not new. Um, is not a Schofield Bible and is certainly not a King James Version. When I first came here to Milton back in the, well, autumn of, uh, what was it, 1970, um, I got, I, I was working out at Whiting Field, uh, kid sailor, you know, and uh, a fellow working in the same shop as I was in, a uh, married guy, invited me to come to church with him. And uh, he said, and afterwards, my wife will cook us dinner. And, and he was a Baptist. I did, not, I did not grow up in a Baptist tradition. In some ways, that might have been good, even. Um, but I, my impression of Baptists from what I had seen was that they were a bunch of ignorant, backwoods, fanatic hillbillies, and I really didn't want to get too close. But that home-cooked meal sounded good. So I went, and I heard for the first time that a person could know that he or she would go to heaven when they died, could know that. And uh, it took me a while of exposure to that to start to get interested enough to pursue it. Um, in those days, um, two, two tests to see if you were called to preach. Uh, that is, uh, among those men who expressed an interest in that. One, they had to like fried chicken. And two, they had to carry an old Schofield Reference Bible. I still carry one today. I just got used to it, 
and, um, and, and I like it. But the NKJV is not the same thing. And Brother William has personally uh, investigated that and can confirm it. All right, the various editions of the 1611 authorized version. If someone decides to produce a new Bible version, then they must also convince Christians that there is a need and a justifiable cause for the new version. One of the deceitful excuses being used today for producing new versions is that the King James Bible has been revised several times since 1611 and that a new revision is needed once again. While spreading this deceitful assertion, the KJV critics hold their breath, hoping that no one will be intelligent enough to ask for a specific deal, details about these versions. The many revisions that have occurred since 1881 bear no resemblance to the various editions of the KJV prior to 1881. The modern revisers are just trying to justify their sins. There were only four editions, actual editions, of the King James Bible produced after 1611, uh, those dates being 1629, 1638, 1762, and 1769. These were not translations like the new versions since 1881, and they really weren't even revisions. <coughs> the 1629 edition was simply an effort to correct printing errors, and two of the original King James translators assisted in the work. I can't remember which one of these editions was nicknamed the Sinner's Bible. And the reason for that was that uh, a printing error occurred in, with regard to the Ten Commandments, and uh, it read, Thou shalt commit adultery. A three-letter word left out that made a big difference. That had to be fixed. And, and have you ever seen those original printing presses? I mean, even with word processors, I get papers you wouldn't believe. And I even make a few mistakes on them myself. Um, so uh, it was pretty laborious to fix um, uh, a print job like this once it was set. Um, the 1629 edition was simply an effort to correct printing errors and two of the original King James translators assisted in the work. The 1638 edition of the KJV also dealt with printing errors, especially words and clauses overlooked by the printers. About 72% of the textual corrections in the KJV were done by 1638, only 27 years after the first printing. And here's, here's uh, the original author's comment on printing in those days. Please bear in mind the fact that printing was a very laborious task prior to 1800. Publishing a flawless work was almost impossible. Even today with computers and advanced word processors, printing errors are still frequently made. Imagine what it was like in the 1600s. Is that a fair consideration? I think so. Then in 1762 and 1769, two final editions of the KJV were, were published. Both of these involved spelling changes be, which became necessary as the English language became more stabilized and spelling rules were established. Another thing that changed over time was the way certain letters look. Um, it's hard to read um, original printing in the Elizabethan era when the KJV was printed. The letter shapes look different. S's look like F's and, and that sort of thing. Um, 
or is it the other way around? I can't remember. Um, pardon me? Okay, got it right. Good. Um, I have on the college table back there um, a uh, photographic reproduction of the 1611 uh, New Testament and you might look in there sometime when you have time and just see what it looked like. Uh, there were no new translations and there were really no new revisions published in 1629, 1638, 1762, or 1769. These were simply editions of the 1611 KJV, which corrected printing errors and spelling. Those who try to equate these editions with the modern translations are just being deceitful or ignorant. And in a lot of cases, that's the issue, or both. The many other so-called revisions of the KJV that occurred in 1613, 1616, 1617, and 1743 are nothing more than running changes and touch-up work at the printers. The real revisions and translations did not start appearing until 1881 with what was called the Revised Version and 1901 what was called the American Standard Version. So if someone walks up with a smirky grin on his face, and I've had this happen, and if you um, talk about the KJV much, it will very likely happen to you. Uh, and they say, so which King James Bible do you have? The 1611, the 1629, the 1638? The 1762 or the 1769, you can simply state that you have, and remember this, a 1769 edition of the King James 1611 authorized version. That answers the question. It answers the question. There's nothing they can say. Why the KJV translators did not accept the Apocrypha as scripture? Another favorite lie of the critics is that the original KJV of 1611 included the Apocrypha, which no true Christian today accepts as scripture. The Apocrypha is a collection of several pagan writings which the Catholic Church accepts as inspired scripture. In fact, the Council of Trent pronounced a curse upon anyone who denied that these books were inspired. Is that scary? The King James translators did not consider the books to be inspired scripture, nor did they include them in the canon as such. They merely placed the apocryphal books between the Old and New Testaments as a historical document, not as scripture. The reasons for not accepting the apocrypha as scripture are listed on page uh, 185 and 186 of the book Translators Revived by Alexander McClure. The seven reasons are basically as follows. And we'll let these be our final uh, consideration for today. Not one of them is in the Hebrew language like the rest of the Old Testament books. Not one of the writers lays any claim to inspiration. That would be worth noting. These books were never acknowledged as sacred scriptures by the Jewish church and therefore were never sanctioned by the Lord. They were not allowed a place among the sacred books during the first four centuries of the Christian church. They contain fabulous statements and statements which contradict not only the canonical scriptures, in other words, the rest of the Bible, but contradict themselves. For example, in the books of Maccabees alone, Antiochus Epiphanes dies three times in three places. That would cause question, would it not?
it inculcates, now I put, inserted a definition here, impresses on the mind by frequent repetition. It inculcates doctrines at variance with the Bible, such as prayers for the dead and sinless perfection. And it teaches immoral practices such as lying, suicide, assassination, and magical incantation. And we'll, we'll conclude uh, looking at this material at that point for today, but I want us to review the books of the Bible. Thought you'd get out without it, huh? Let's try all the way from Genesis through the book of Acts. See if we, can, if we can do it. If you're still looking at your list, that's fine, but please participate. It'll help you, and it'll help your neighbor. Let's try it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. We've got time. Can we do it just one more time? Just go home with that as your last thought from Sunday school. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Okay, uh, Brother Kenny, could you close us out in a word of prayer, please?